Hi fashion sewers, it's Colleen G. Lee here and this is fashionsewingblog.com. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to sew darts. There are a different shapes of darts and we'll begin with the first one which is called a single dart. Okay this is a sewing pattern as I'm sure you can tell and this is what a dart marking looks like. It's v-shape and then you've got the little circles there is where you'd actually do tailor tacks so that you actually have a position in which to line them up and sew. That's what it looks like and this is the position of the dart as you can see there. So we've got the tailor tacks there, there and the points are there and that's just representing of that. And then this is what it looks like on the other side where you can't see it in details but hopefully you can see the little markings there okay so that's what you call a single dart right the next dart I'll show you I'll just put that to one side is what you call a double dart and a double dart is what you'll find on like dresses or jackets or coats and as you can see here it's very similar to if I just put my hand there, the first dart I showed you, which is a single dart, and all it is, it's been doubled. So it takes away the fullness from also the bust area and around the waistline and hip area. So it's called a double dart. Some people do refer to it as um, a fish-shaped dart, and I've also heard it being called like a diamond-shaped dart. So whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. So that's what it looks like on a tissue pattern. And... That's what the markings are going to be like. So you've got tail tacks there re representing each point, top and bottom, and then you've got one in the middle. So that's what it looks like with the tails on the other side, similar to exactly the same actually as the single dart. You see little tiny markings, the tail tacks. What I've done here for this demonstration, I just put a pencil line just so that you can see. What I'm talking about and you can see the actual shape and the next dart let's put that to one side is going to be called what you call a tuck dart and that's the shape of a tuck dart the reason why it's actually called a tuck dart is because it's a dart that's within the garment as the first dart was a dart that you actually put and um, that runs into a seam this actually runs into the actual garment so as you can see there is no point here and this is what it looks like in this sample of fabric so you've got a point there representing just a uh, one tail attack and then you've got two there which will match up and you've got two there so what I'll do next I'll show you how to actually sew them and then that's what it looks like under this side so that now that you know um, what the three darts are, I will actually go ahead and sew them for you. If you just bear with me for one moment. Okay, I'm now at my machine. I'm going to sew the darts. The first one I'm going to sew is the single dart, which is more common. I think most people will be used to seeing um, the single dart. Right, what I've done is, there's two little pencil marks here, and they are indicating the uh, little snips that I've made, little notches there. So I'm going to line those up, there we go, right so the dart is now folded in half and I'm going to put pins in place there, one there, I'll put it up three points actually, there and one at the point where the dart will end. Just put a pin in there. So I'm going to be sewing from that point there all the way down to this point where it tapers off into nothing. Okay, um, I'm actually going to show you um, a technique of using masking tape in order to give you a straighter line when you sew. For those of you that um, probably don't want to attempt doing it um, in that manner. So what I've done is put some mas masking tape and lining it to the notches there. And this will hopefully give you a better sew line. Okay, we're now going to sew that now. 
put it in position there. Put my needle down into my work. Take a couple of stitches forward. There. The stitch width um, length that you should go for is uh, about 2, 2.5. And then I'm going to press the reverse button and go back to three stitches. Okay. Right, I'm using a bigger stitch just so that I'll take these pins out of place, just so that you can see it. And just go along the tape, along the side of the tape. Do not stitch into the tape because it's adhesive, remember, and you don't want your needle to become all gooey. Just keep going. And as you can see, the dart is now coming to an end where it's starting to taper off. I'm just getting to the next one there. Right, got to that position there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to back tack into the dart. So I'm going to lift the feet, bring it back, bring it forward to me, place the feet back down, put the needle back into the work. Hope you can see that. And then I'm going to come forward a few stitches. I'm going to try and do that without my hand being in the way, and back a few stitches. Okay, take my work out. Hope you can see that. So I've actually back tapped into the dart itself, and then just peel away the masking tape. There we go, put on the end of there, and there's your dart. That's a very nice dart, and it's more important a point, there's no plucker there. And then you just take out the tape tap, just remove them. Okay, so that one's done. The next one is going to be the double dart, or as some call it, fish shaped dart or the diamond dart. Okay, I've actually, it's the same procedure as I've done the single dart. And as you can see there, is that I've sewn one end of the dart, start in the middle of the dart and work towards the point. And once you've done that, because it's a double dart, you need to start in that same position again. So you need to turn your work over and start from that point and then work all the way to the actual end of the dart. So that's what you're doing, you're just flipping it over when you're doing a double dart. Okay, needle down. Pencil marking that I've done here possibly represent um, using a carbon paper and a tracing wheel. Or as I said previously, just just for demonstration purposes. Right, I'm actually going to bring this to the end and I'm actually going to remove it without back tacking from the machine. Give it quite a long tail. There we go. And then I'm going to knot it off at the end there. Um, it's called, sometimes I've heard it being called um, a tailor's knot. So what you do is wrap it around your finger and then create a loop and then you bring that back in and through and then tie it off. One more, tie it off, and there's your knot. So that's one way you can finish off your dart. And there we have the double dart. And that's what it looks like on that side. Just need to cut away the threads. And one more, and this is the tuck dart. Right, we're gonna start in that position there, work our way down. Right, I'm actually just going to put a couple of pins in there just to keep that in place. And there. Okay. Start from that position there. Needle down. Stitch forward a couple of stitches. Whoops, that's loose with too many to go back. Okay. And then, remember when you're you sewing the dark, you are more or less sewing a straight line but at an angle. For you. Right, I've come to the end there. Wear it down, and if you want, bring it up. Sorry, feet down, bring your needle up, and then bring the work back because I want to finish off the dart into the actual dart itself. 
want it done up. Get that off. Get rid of the loose ends. And there's your tuck dart. And the reason why it's called a tuck dart is because the top of the dart can be like a decorative feature. So there's your little tuck. I'm going to take those out of the way. So you've got your tuck dart there. Okay, so that's your darts. And uh, I hope you found the tutorial useful. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.